we take a look at this generation of young ventriloquists coming up in our art form with our very first correspondent, Jack Williams, today on... Ventriloquism Weekly! It's absolutely true that ventriloquists are some of the coolest and most giving people on the face of the planet, as well as being some of the most articulate. Even the youth in the art are just fantastic conversationalists, and I guess that's just what happens when you talk for two. And uh, this is true even of 16-year-old Indiana ventriloquist Jack Williams. He's joined our podcast as a special correspondent to report on our generation, meaning the, uh, the youngsters here, of ventriloquists coming up the ropes. And so, uh, today he's here to discuss the great youth talent found at the Vent Haven Convention this past year. Jack Williams, thank you very much for being with us today. How are you? I'm doing good, Matt. How are you? I love the show. I'm fantastic. Thank you for the compliment. We love that uh, you guys love the show. And it's uh, usually, uh, I don't want to say mostly or usually, but it is for people in your age bracket or our age bracket. I'm only 19, three years older than you, that we do this. Uh, a learning resource. So uh, I'm just going to start the basics. You're, you're, the, you're the new generation of ventriloquists. What got you interested? Yeah. What, yeah. what was the spark moment for you? Um, well, I think that, uh, the, the, this generation of, uh, ventriloquists is looking pretty bright. You know, we have, uh, people like, uh, Jeffrey and Golk and, uh, Jake Lamarck who are all great, you know, young ventriloquists. And, uh, I'm glad to have been, you know, the, the ventriloquist world with them. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Yes. Uh, what do you think is, uh, I saw the junior open mic as did many of people at the convention. And I'm just going to take a quick side note for those of you that weren't at convention. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I keep referencing it, but, uh, that you, you really should try to get there if, if you're able to, uh, because we're seeing some creative, amazingly talented young people. And, uh, this was the first year that, uh, since my first year at convention, I didn't participate and was able to watch. And it was just so creative and I just want to know, where does that creativity come from in you? What, what are you trying to do? What is your inspiration? Um, well, I think my inspiration was, um, you know, looking at Jeff and seeing, like, everything that he does. It's just a lot of it, like, he, a lot of it is early career. He, he did the same, like, act, like, basically he repeated his act, but as as you see, he becomes, you know, more popular. Um, you know, he changes material, and it, it, he changes it every year now. Like, every time I go to see him, it's just a new act. And so I really like that. And so the creativity with me is um, not taking jokes from anyone, just creating my own jokes that, you know, apply to me. And I definitely saw that with a lot of the juniors that performed. I mean, they were all just great um, you know, the creativity in all of them are, was really just this amazing to see, you know, it's like they're on a professional level, level at a, a, such a, such a young age, you know? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to stop you there and, and talk a little bit about your act. Uh, those of you that didn't see it, I hope it makes its way to YouTube, uh, so, sometime soon, but, uh, I want to, I'm not going to do it justice with an explanation. It is safe to say that you don't use an ordinary puppet. Let's uh, talk a little bit about your act and what you did specifically and where that came from. Um, well, I, well, I thought it would be funny, um, to like play a joke on everyone that I knew that was a ventriloquist. Um, because I know so many people that uh, build figures and make puppets, and I, I've never made a puppet in my life. And so I was like thinking, it, wouldn't it be funny if I just told everyone that I, I've been building this figure, but I couldn't tell them what it was until I performed. And so that's where the sock puppet idea came from, because it was almost like, once I got out there expecting to see uh, a dummy, like a professional dummy that I've been spending like six months working on, but instead I just pull out this uh, sock puppet with googly eyes and a blonde wig on. And <laughs> I, I don't know, that's, that's pretty much where the uh, idea came from it. And then I just made a bunch of um, sock puppet jokes and, and just different things like that, you know? Yeah. You know, um, off of that, let's talk about uh, young people and rehearsal, uh, because I will admit that I am guilty of this. And uh, I don't mean to be guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. 
I'll sit down and I'll be like, let's rehearse. And you go to write a script and you go, let's check Facebook first. And then you don't get off yeah. of Facebook. And there are just so many distractions for for our generation just coming up in the art. What do you do to combat that? What is your rehearsal schedule? What do you do? Um, well, it's funny that you say that because, um, you know, I, I've been doing acting and things like that in, in school. And when, I, when the summer came, I kind of just wanted, like, a break. So, um it was a week before Vet Haven, and I was still still signed up to perform at the uh, at the junior open mic. And I was like, "Oh crap! I have to write an act in a week." And so, basically, uh, in acting, I kind of learned how to uh, manage my time because you oh, yeah. know things were due at a quick, pretty quick uh, schedule. So. I basically wrote the whole act in um, like three days, but and then I just rehearsed it the rest of the week until Vet Haven. But keep in mind, I, I rehearsed it like like crazy, and I still had the idea in my head for like a really long time. But um, I just wrote the act in like three days, and so um, I think I think that the the rehearsing thing just just comes with anything. It's just something you have to do if you want a good payoff and you want people to respect. Um, you know, your act and how much work you put into it. And just the main thing is just to make people laugh. That's pretty much it. Absolutely. And that's not, you know, you brought up a good point. And uh, in, in saying that about Facebook and distractions, I didn't mean to say this, insinuate they were unavoidable, just um, manageable. And you, you hit the nail on the head with time management and and just sitting down with yeah. your goal to do it. Um, which which yeah. is, brings to another point, which is, just ventriloquism in general being uh, something that is appealing to a younger generation. And we certainly have Jeff to thank for that. But what else do you think it is? Um, something that I think is definitely, um, you know, inspiring the younger generation. Well, for me, is it's just the media in general, like with the Internet and stuff like that and YouTube, because... Uh, when I got into ventriloquism, it was basically just um, I was watching TV and an episode of Goosebumps came on, yeah, old, old Halloween show, <laughs> and I just saw a ventriloquist yeah. dummy, and so I was just like, um, I'm going to look more about that. I'm going to find more about this, and I kind of just looked it up, and Jeff was the first person I saw on YouTube doing the Aquaman skit, and I was kind of just like, wow, this is uh, this is a new kind of comedy that I haven't seen before. I'm going to get into this you know and so i did and so i really do think it's it's youtube and things like that and it's comedy central it's all it's basically all that combined you know certainly it's it certainly is and then you, you have jeff kind of doing classic ventriloquism uh and then uh you know with that topical spin and then you have terry fader who yes. um who is who just took it to, well, what else could be done with that with your mouth closed? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, something about Terry is that when I watch um, seeing ventriloquists and they're they're not good seeing ventriloquists, I get kind of kind of bored when I watch them. Right. I, I really came into ventriloquism for the comedy. But when you watch Terry, it's like you're going to see the actual person who wrote the song and is singing it. And it's just amazing, you know, to see someone who who can, you know, like reenact these voices and these dance moves. It's just so greatly. I mean, it's just it's it's amazing. I know. He's a true example of what he said at Ben Haven, which is if you uh, and a, this is a piece of advice for everybody. You know, if you're good at more than one thing. If you're good at ventriloquism and another thing, find the best way to incorporate them both and do them. And that's what he's doing. And I almost yeah. Would yeah. you agree that I he... was like, I was sitting there during his lecture, and I I noticed that he said my wife is over there and my choreographer is over there, and I was thinking like, why does he need a choreographer? I I, I never see him dance, <laughs> and that night during the show, I realized why he has a choreographer because. He was dancing a lot, and he's actually a really good dancer, I found out, you know. Yeah, I mean, he was, I was, um, I could see that he was uh, dripping sweat, you know, five yeah. minutes yeah. into he the... Looked, 
performance. Like, he just uh, was performing like with Le- like Led Zeppelin on the guitar, and he just finished a solo. I mean, that's that's what he looks like. And what kind of like he's he's a ventriloquist, right? <laughs> Like, yeah, I felt like there was almost more um, singing than there was ventriloquism, and that's not a bad thing. It's just, oh, no. It, it was kind of, to, for me, I felt like he was trying to, you know, tell a story, and he did that with his own singing. I mean, it was basically all just one big package, you know, for any person who likes theater or he likes a good story in general, you know. Yeah. And um, I almost, you know, I wonder if you agree, but um, I almost want him to record an album of his impressions that made him famous. But that would yeah. kind of defeat the purpose of what he does. You, you know what I mean? You know, it... Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think that the, the, the impressions that he does, like he's he's worked, you know, so hard just to you know get those impressions. I mean, I I do some impressions, like I I do a Barack Obama impression, and that that took me a while, you know, just to just to do that. It was like. It's like the only impression that I can do, like actually fairly well, you know. Yeah. And so it, it, it's 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 a it's amazing that a ventriloquist can can do impressions and actually like do it through ventriloquism, you know. I've never seen anything like it, you know. Incredible. It's it's just. Yeah. So let's get back to your generation here for a second. Um, I had the opportunity, uh, and again, I promise to our listeners, as we get more and more removed from the convention, I'll stop referencing it. I want this to be open to anybody. Uh, but <laughs> I had the opportunity to meet some people, see some uh, people around my age again, and I'm just blown away. Let's talk about Jeffrey Glock for uh, just a second. Gold. I, I, Glock. I, I, I can never get his last name right, so Jeffrey, I apologize. I think Golk. Yeah. Well, Jeffrey, the kid. Um, actually, on the uh, junior open night, this is funny. Um, he was telling the the announcer, the MC, like what his last name was, and uh, when he got up there, he the person said, uh, "Now introducing Jeffrey Goats," and so he said Goats as his last name. <laughs> like, how can you mistake Golk for Goats? I don't know, but it it happens. It happens. I th- Dale Brown. Yeah, was, yeah. I, I mean, you really trying. can't. Um, you know, misunderstand Williams, which is my last name. That's pretty a uh, pretty common last name. Will I am's? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could think I'm the rapper guy. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, to find out that the the kid is what 14 years old and he builds his own figures. Yeah, that's amazing. You should you should definitely have him on the show. He he's uh, definitely a lot uh, fun to talk to. I mean, um, Jeffrey, if you're I listening, today. And he actually, I don't know if anyone know, knew about this, but there's an auction going on at eBay. Um, if you're familiar with the McElroy uh, brothers and their work, mm-hmm. um, they make like the Cadillac of the Trollocus figures. And so there was a, a McElroy replica on eBay, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to call Jeffrey because he loves these things. And so I called Jeffrey, and two days later, he won it for only $600. And it has raising eyebrows, a stick-out tongue, moving eyes, and, it, I mean, it's a McElroy replica, and it does all that, and it was only for 600 I mean, that's that's an amazing deal. I, yeah. I kind of let him have that one, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, but he he deserves it because he he does great work too, and we'll get him on the show and we'll find out more about the work that he yeah, does. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, I actually uh, I actually have a figure of my own. Um, my <laughs> it's a uh, um, Timothy Cowles figure. I don't know if you yes uh, heard of him. He, I think he was one of the performers actually um, on the Saturday Night Show. I'm pretty sure. No, he but, was. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I have this figure, and basically he's the only figure that I use besides that sock puppet thing, you know? That was kind of a new thing, but other than that, uh, I just used Andy. That's the Timothy Cowles figure. But yeah, they're they're great figures, those are. Yeah, and uh, the point I'm trying to make with all, with, with all this talking about other, other people um, is just, I am just so amazed at what this generation is doing, and, and maybe it's because I'm a part of it. I'll... I'll be yeah. honest about that, but yes, you are, Matt. <laughs> well, in, in whatever way, uh, but um, I'm just so amazed. I, that... I think the future is definitely bright for ventriloquism because 
there's so many people that um, are influenced by it, and it's it's kind of a thing. It's different than stand-up comedy because there's so many people doing stand-up and so many younger people doing stand-up, and you know, not that many people make it in stand-up, but you have a greater chance of making it in ventriloquism if you're good. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's definitely a bright thing for your for young people. You know, so get your kids into playing with dolls because it'll pay off. Yes. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> or they could grow up to be a fifty-year-old man living in their mom's basements playing with uh, puppets. <laughs> well, and I mean, it's just. It just amazes me that there are so many young people that are in it for the right reasons. I mean, you know, you yeah. get the Jeff Dunham fans who are who are in it, and then they realize, you know, I just wanted to to be like this comedian that I really liked, and I wanted to do his shtick, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's what you eventually find out. But there are so many people who are in this. For yeah, the right I mean, reasons. when I first came to Vet Haven, I was like um, 11 years old. And I was one of the youngsters, and I feel like there was just um, because my first year was actually Jeffrey's first year, and um, you know there was so many. There's only like two or three younger people like who were my age who were who were going there. I think you were there too. But when you go now, it's like you see like ten, like they're all they're all there. You know, there's so much more uh, younger people. It's just amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing to recognize the history. There was another gentleman. Um, Junior Open Mike, I forget his name, and I'm I'm pounding my head against the wall forgetting his name. I'm terrible with names unless I am five times. Um, yeah. He did the the tribute to the oh, and I'm forgetting his name too. The uh, ventriloquist who's no longer with us, uh, very famous. Um, oh man, I wish the name would come to me. Anyway, he was heralding back, and it was an example in immaculate lip control. Yeah, yeah, I I saw that. And I thought it was really nice that he was doing that and stuff. Um, you know, I, I I I like how the the juniors like dress up. Like if you see um, Jake, who's also a junior, um, he was in like a full like tuxedo, and so was his puppet too. You know, taking it back to the old days. Yeah, absolutely. And the person I'm gonna, you know, we talked about you. We talked about what you do. So the the last person, the last person from that section I'm going to wrap our talking about our generation up with is Peter. Yeah, Peter. I mean, come on. That was yeah, that just... Was, that was something amazing. If you, if any of you are listening to this, we're at the um, junior open mic. Uh, you might have seen me. You might have forgotten about me. I don't care. It's, it's just one of those things where you look at someone like Peter and you just see a, a bright future. You know, yeah. you just see something that uh, is going to grow into a future career for him because he can sing terrifically and um, he can improv really well. And at the age that he's at, that he's doing that, that that's just, that's great. I mean, um, I, that guy has a good future. Let's just say that. And so do you. That's not to. So does. So do you. And so does everyone. You know, I saw. Thank we you. Saw. I believe you have a bright future as well. <laughs> oh, I wasn't fishing for anything. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um. Uh. Yeah. It was just. It was a complete exercise in what to do when something goes wrong at thirteen, fourteen years old, and it was just. I'm sitting. He there, handled it like a pro. He did. And I. I it was just, it was great. I went up to him. And I thought it would have been perfect. I don't think he had enough time. And that's another thing I want to talk about is uh, the change in um, the, uh, the the open mic thing for yeah. uh, the junior and the senior thing. But, like, it would have been perfect if he if he just sang a song at the end and, and kind of wrapped up his everything. But it was because he only had five minutes. Yeah. And that and was he'd the already... thing with me is there was a new um, rule in place for only five minutes, kind of like America's Got Talent where they yeah. have the judges. And I, I had no idea about that. So the, the day that I got there and that we were about to go on, I realized that we only had five minutes. So I literally had to cut out all my material 10 minutes before the show. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I mean, I thought it went pretty good. Oh, it um, did. You would have never known you were struggling to reduce it. 
And uh, yeah, that, I, I cut out some jokes, but yeah, I, I, I think it's a good thing. You know, it, it, it shows what the real world is like uh, in, you know, in stand-up comedy clubs, they give you like three minutes your first time and, you know, five is better than three. Yeah. And I'll just say this for, for Peter's sake, you know, I was, I was personally a little disappointed that, uh, that, you know, as a, as I don't want to say reward, because I don't want to be condescending or, or put it down, uh, but as a, just because he had done so well with improving through that issue, once they realized yeah. they couldn't get the music on, I would have loved to have heard him do it a cappella as kind of a consolation for you no know, music. Yeah, but yeah. at that so, point so he right. he'd already done like twelve minutes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, completely um, understand that. <laughs> That would have been great. I I don't know why they would didn't let him do that, but um, you know, it's Net Haven is is a great place for you know juniors to go because I've been going there for like five years straight, and I think I I hope I always will be able to come back because it's just you get to see all your old friends, you know, and you can make new ones too, you know. Yeah. What I'll I'll end on this question for you. What would you like to see that you haven't seen yet from our generation? Um, something that I'd really like to see from this generation coming up. I, I do want to see someone, uh, you know, become a, a star like Jeff. You know, I'd love to see another ventriloquist star. But I, something I've always like urged to see is, is an actual like an actual movie that is about ventriloquism. Like, not just a documentary, but an actual movie with actors, and like, that's a good movie. I, I mean, I know there was one that Adrian Brody was in, but um, it wasn't, I don't know if it was that popular, but uh, in, like, an actual comedy. Like, I would love to see that. I'd love to see someone new on Comedy Central, you know, a new ventriloquist. Yeah. Jeff works so well. Try someone else, you know, to to just get more more variety. They have... You know what? Hundreds yeah. of stand-up I mean, comics. One the only ventriloquist I think that Comedy Central has ever had is Jeff. Yeah, you would be correct. You would be correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, that'd be fantastic if they had a new one. You know. Yeah. And that may be the future generation uh, going on Comedy Central and things like that. Yes. Well, we can only hope uh, for bright things for this generation in ventriloquism, and I can only yeah. hope for bright things for you. Jack Williams, 16 years old, and one of the most articulate high school students I have ever met, and one of the most talented. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Matt. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. That was a fun conversation to have, and I would like to assure all our listeners that Jack Williams will be back in the future to talk about even more things related to youth and ventriloquism. And so for now, I want to thank all our listeners for tuning in again this week. But before I sign off, and before you close that tab, stay with me for just another second here, I'd like to say this. I consider all of my guests celebrities. It means the world to me that those that are willing to do this come on here, and we get to have this fantastic conversation about this weird, wacky, awesome art form. And next week... We have a surprise guest hopefully coming on in a special edition of Ventriloquism Weekly. I say hopefully because at the time of this uh, airing of the podcast, the time it's being uploaded, the interview hasn't been recorded yet, but uh, we're working and trying to coordinate a time to do it within the week so that we have it for next week. And uh, it's awesome that this person is going to take the time out of their busy schedule to do this. So... I know that there are those of you that are our loyal followers, and I love you guys. Thank you very much. Each week, you guys grow, and this is reaching more more and more people. And I want to ask you guys, if you know people who aren't here yet, send them our way, because nobody, nobody should miss what we possibly have next week. And I continue to say possibly, because I don't want to get your hopes up too high, uh, and I'll let you know if it works out or not. And even if it doesn't, I'm sure we will have another fantastic guest for you next week. But it is looking like this really cool thing is going to happen. So keep our fingers crossed. And uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. And uh, you'll all have to just wait on pins and needles like I have to until next Monday and tune in same time, same place. And that's it for us this week. Write to us and take charge of your podcast. Please, we want to hear from you. Make this as interactive as possible. Send your thoughts on all of our topics to ventriloquismweekly at gmail.com. And all of our episodes are available to download on iTunes. 
You can also listen and follow us on our hosting site, which is ventriloquismweekly.podomatic.com. That's ventriloquismweekly.podomatic.com. And again, write to us, write to us, write to us, ventriloquismweekly at gmail.com. And signing off for Ventriloquism Weekly, how many times did I just say the name of this show in the past minute and a half? I'm Matt Bailey, reminding all you vents out there to keep talking for two.